So I'm Takashi Oka from University of Tokyo, and I also want to thank the organizers. So today, uh, what's the laser pointer? Okay. So uh, so I'll talk about uh, many body strong field physics, and so this is a collaboration with uh, Takuya Kitagawa, Koji Hashimoto, and uh, Sonoda san and Murata san and Kinoshi san. Yeah, I think some people have complained this green light is too, too strong. Too strong. And do okay. we, is there another pointer? Yeah. Oh, we don't have another pointer. We used to have another pointer, but it has to So go, go ahead. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, by the way, I'll be moving to Germany from this August. Okay. So. Thank you. So this is the contents of my talk. So I was asked to give a very general uh, introduction. So I'll give a rather long introduction. And then I'll uh, discuss our recent studies using gauge gravity gravity. But this will be on the holographic QCD. And not, so it's a little bit different from uh, condensed matter systems. OK, so what's strong, strong field physics? Actually, this strong field physics, uh, there are several branches in physics that uh, this is being studied. And what, one is in high energy physics. In high energy physics, the main target of the research is the, vac the vacuum. And in order to study the properties of the vacuum, people try to excite uh, some uh, particles. And there are several ways. One way is to use very strong lasers, like free electron lasers. And in such processes, one can excite electrons and positrons and induce uh, pair production. Another uh, very uh, common way to do this is to use heavy ion uh, colliders, like the ones in serum. And the main target there is QCD processes. And in such uh, phenomena, one can study uh, pair production of quark and anti-quark, and also study the confinement. The, okay, so these are experimental facilities for free electron lasers. Trying to do this. One drawback is that, okay, so actually these experiments are very uh, expensive. Like one laser shot costs something like this. Wow. Uh, so strong uh, incorporation. Okay, so strong field physics in condensed matter, it's very economical. Uh, but here, the target is materials. But there are uh, many interesting materials, and different materials will host different universe. Like if you study graphene or transition metal dicarbonate, you can study a two plus one dimensional drag system. If you study a molten insulator, you can study something uh, something like a pseudo confinement state. The main uh, experimental facilities are on tabletops. Uh, people use ultra fast pump pro measurements or time resolved ARPES. And these are the animation uh, of what people think is happening. So you, you see electrons, and the laser will excite those electrons, and those electrons will be transformed into a non equilibrium state. Okay, so in the strong field physics, what would be the basic problems? Actually, the history of strong field physics is very, very long. So one effect is the so-called Schwinger effect, which goes back to 1951. So this is a very simple quantum tunneling process, which leads to pair production. And this happens in strong electric fields. Another interesting example would be the Froquet uh, physics. So this is a quantum state with, that will uh, take place in a periodic driven system. Okay, so I'll show you some example in, for the, this first Schwinger mechanism. Okay, so actually the history is even uh, longer. It, the real beginner, the first one to st study this was Heisenberg and Euler uh, in the 30s. Okay, so this is a picture of a usual tunneling process where you have a, 
uh, hill, and uh, we can go uh, through this uh, potential barrier. Something similar takes place in the uh, dielectric breakdown process in a motor insulator. So, okay, so I try to schematically show you uh, a so-called band structure of a Hubble model or a motor insulator in state. So this part corresponds to the upper Hubble band. This part is a lower Hubble band. And if you have a static electric field like this, uh, your, so the tunneling barrier here corresponds to the barrier of this uh, band. But you can still have tunneling process from here to here where you produce uh, double long and hole in pairs. Uh, related phenomena takes place in QCD. But in this case, you want to tear apart quarks and anti-quarks, which is bounded with each other with these confining strings. But this is possible if your electric field is strong enough. Actually, there is some uh, interesting controversy or recent experiments uh, where people study the directed breakdown processes in correlated insulators. Okay, so this is the axis in the, is the electric field. So originally you, are, you have an equilibrium multi insulator. But if you apply very strong electric field, what happens is that this quantum tunneling process or this Schwinger process will take place. Actually, this has recently been experimentally observed in uh, VO2 using terahertz laser in uh, grouping constants. So this is an experimental plot where the change in the optical uh, uh, transparency has been measured as a function of the strength of the electric field. And you get something like this. Uh, this plot is actually a numerical result using non-equilibrium dynamic mean, mean field theory that I did with Martin Eckstein and Philip Werner. And okay, you can see some similarity between these uh, two. So this is, is actually a IV characteristic where the current against the electric field is plotted. So this part, so the tunneling process takes place. The real controversy is happens below the string limit. So they are doing experiments. There are many, many interesting uh, phenomena down there. Uh, one example, so our organizers has proposed this interesting filament creation processes back in uh, 2004. Uh, me and with Nagaosa, we also proposed some interface uh, transitions. Also, recently there was a very nice experiment showing avalanche processes in motor insulators. And also, these synaptic behaviors, these are very interesting ideas. So actually, I want to, so there are many, many processes here, but I also want to add one more process, which would be the Ekstone mode transition. So this is the older version of the mode transition, where uh, excited Ekstones will screen the interaction. And we found this using the ads shift method. Okay, so that was uh, the Schwinger part. The second example is the Froke physics. So if you have a system, and if you periodically drive the system, there are many, many interesting phenomena. One, uh, it, actually, there's one classical example for this, and that's the Kapitza's inver inverted pendulum. Uh, I got this, downloaded this from YouTube. So I will, this is a movie. Okay. Yeah, I hope it will move. Okay, so of course, the pendulum, the st stability, stable point is down here. But if you shake it like this, there will be another stable point up there. And you can see that if you give a small perturbation, it comes back. So this is really a stable point. And well, actually, we also study a many-body quantum version of this, namely using the uh, kapitza sine gordon model recently. But I will skip this today. What I want to show you is another animation. So this would be a Froquet topological state. I'll show you two animations. One is, OK, so these are wave packet dynamics in the honeycomb lattice. This one and this one. I just put one electrons here and here. This is the 
edge of a two-dimensional honeycomb lattice. Okay. So this guy goes inside, the wave packet travels inside, whereas this guy, you can see that there's something around this two-dimensional uh, honeycomb lattice which goes in this direction. So what's the difference between this and this? Okay, so this guy, there's no field, just honeycomb lattice. This guy has a circularly polarized laser on it. So I have a rotating electric field in the x, y direction. Just that, you have this higher edge mode, which is an indication that this system is a topological insulator, a churn insulator. Okay, actually, so recently this phenomena, so laser induced topological states or Froquet churn insulator has attracted many interest in, by experimentalists. I think the first experiment was done in Germany by uh, Ganichev's group. They studied the laser induced hollow effect in graphene. Another one, uh, 2013, there was a photonic rocket topological insulator. Actually, they uh, realized the same uh, wave packet dynamics that I have shown you in the last animation. So there's, this is a wave packet, okay, and it goes here and it goes down. So there's a, a process that you can see that this uh, wave packet moves only in this direction. Okay, so another recent experiment was done in New Gatex group at MIT where they uh, really observed the Froke block states using time-resolved ARPES. Also, uh, last year there was a Nature paper by uh, uh, Esslinger's group in ETH. Okay, and uh, okay, so experimental realization of the topological Haraday model. And so this Froke stuff, uh, so honeycomb lattice with circular polarized laser was induced by uh, lattice, uh, uh, moving the lattice, and they actually recovered the Haraday phase diagram using drift measurements. Okay, so that was my general introduction for the quantum dynamics, and the sec second part would be to study something related to this, this phenomena using holography. But before going into anything, I would probably have to show you this slide. So this slide was, I got this from Koji Hashimoto, who is my collaborator. So I think many people are very suspicious about this holography stuff. But actually, so if you understand what's happening there, uh, this method is uh, reliable in some sense. Okay, so what's plotted here is the meson spectrum of QCD. The left one is obtained by holographic QCD. And the right one is using lattice QCD. So it's a Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, so this meson spectrum, okay, the condensed matter uh, terminology would be exciton spectrum. So you have a gap, like a semiconductor and excitons, and you have uh, 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 optically permitting exciton and forbidding exciton. Those are plotted here. For example, this zero plus plus state, the energy obtained by holographic QCD is something like 3.5 or something like that, whereas this guy, it's also here, and the energy is four. Okay. And you can also see that some exons, so this two plus plus is here, whereas it's around here. You can also notice that some exon modes are present here while they're not present here. So some of the modes disappear when you take the large energy limit. And also the energy, okay, so is not totally the same. This is also a large energy, uh, 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 can be explained by this large energy uh, 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 limit. So there's a error bar of one over n, which is uh, one over three, so a 30% of difference in those energy can be happening. So what I will explain next uh, in the following will be using this holographic QCD. So any calculation I do, I always have this error bar of 30%. But 
decide that we think that the results are regime uh, true. So our three are so actually we are a group of physicists We're from different disciplines. So one, uh, two, so Hashimoto san and Sonoda san are string theorists. And Murata san and Kinosha san is general relativity. And I'm from condensed matter. Actually, Sonoda san and Murata san has their posters. Okay. So the motivations of each of us are very different. Like the string theory guy, they always want to find new phenomena in string theory. General relativity, they are interested in black holes. And me, I'm interested in the effect of correlations in non equilibrium dynamics. But this holography is our link. We can do research together. Okay, so the model we are studying is not the Hubble model. It's actually this strange toy model, which is the n equals two supersymmetric QCD in the large n limit. Okay, so this is the Lagrangian of QCD with some Suji partners. Uh, actually, this is just QCD part, where I have quarks like this and gluons. So these gluons will mediate interaction between quarks and other quarks or anti-quarks. But to simplify this picture, I, you can just think it as something like a three plus one dimensional Dirac fermion with interactions. This interaction is mediated by gluons. Okay, so this is a proposed phase ram, not for holographic QCD, but for the authentic QCD. So this is the chemical potential, which corresponds to doping. This is the temperature. You have the hadron phase, superconductor phase, pro-gluon plasma phase, and something around here. Okay, so one question is, okay, so everyone in this room are interested in those bad guys. So bad metals like in cuprates, manganites, organite, organics, and so on. But is QCD as bad as we want it to be? So the phase time look bad enough. So there's many interesting lines here. And also there's some uh, indications like, uh, you can see, uh, so it's, Shin Nakamura, they, he proposed that uh, there's a S-shaped IV characteristic in the hadron phase, so this part, which corresponds to the multi initiator if this was a cuprate. Okay, so okay, this is the, I tried to explain the correspondence, ADS shift correspondence, but maybe I can, I can go do this quickly. So the, this is the, D, the so-called D3, D7 configuration. So, okay, okay. so uh, historically, originally, Marlissana found out that a D brain can be mapped to uh, some uh, metric. And then, Karch Katz, uh, they introduced this uh, probe brain system where you have at least two a set of brains. So, here and here the D7 brain and D3 brain. This D3 brain corresponds to the uh, Jan Mears field, which Marlissana originally considered. You can see some lines connecting the brains like here. Actually, in the low energy limit, these lines, so these are strings, correspond to quarks, so this end line, end point correspond to quarks. This guy correspond to gluons or gluons. So uh, this line correspond to these states and this to the gluons. Another limit is that starting from this D3, D7, one can take the large N limit. Taking the large N limit for this D3 brain, uh, one can replace this part with a metric, which is actually an ADS metric. And with, so the system has a new direction of this ADS direction, which you go to so this D7 brain, goes, approaches the ADS center. So this is the configuration that we will consider. And the fluctuation. Okay, so this D brain is a classical, it's really a brain or some uh, membrane stuff that the, it has some classical fluctuations. And this classic fluctuation is uh, governed by 
the deductible inferred uh, action. So the gauge gravity duality is the duality between this gauge theory side. So that's strong coupling limit of Suji QCD is uh, related to this uh, gravity theory, which is the classical fluctuation of this D brain. And as I said, this uh, DBI action governs the fluctuation of this uh, brain. OK, so once you get a Lagrangian or action, what do you do? We learn in uh, uh, undergrad that you do this Euler Lagrangian method. So you can obtain the equation of motion by differentiating the action, and you get something like this. Actually, this process is the same as what you do in Maxwell equation. So usual uh, electromagnetism, this is a Lagrangian, and the Euler Lagrangian equation is something like this. And actually, this uh, Maxwell equation and this nonlinear Maxwell equation looks very similar. You can see a partial difference uh, shell here, which corresponds to the one here and here. Okay, so this guy inside this bracket is actually this F mu nu, so electric field and magnetic field. So in our original papers, we were uh, studying doing some numerical cal calculation using this equation. But recently, so uh, Murata-san and Kinosha-san uh, joined our, we are now combining the force and they are the specialists in general relativity. And they say that, okay, so this equation has some singularity, uh, artificial singularity, and it's better to use uh, equation of motion in a different gauge. And it's very, very complicated. But the result is very nice. Okay, so this is the IV characteristic of this holographic QCD in the confining phase, the current and the electric field. Originally, the current is zero, up to a critical uh, Schrodinger limit, or the critical field. And then the current goes finite. Actually, this critical uh, uh, electric field is uh, correspond to the confining force. So the Q and Q bar is always confined, uh, coupled with each other and bounded. But this electric field is the, the field strength that you need to unbind this uh, fork and anti-quark pair. If you, okay, so this is zero and finite, but if you expand this part, this small region into here, okay, so this is uh, very subtle, but there's a S-shaped part. It doesn't look like a S-shape, but zero here and this part. It's hidden somewhere here. Okay, so actually this part. Mm -hmm. the yeah. black hole. So this is the black hole in the bit. Yeah. Extreme hole. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, finite temperature. Similar to a finite temperature, but the, the, it comes from the effective uh, metric. <clears throat> Okay, so actually this uh, IV characteristic is, looks something similar to what we obtain in Kornes matter, so multi insulator, so something like this. So this is the VO2, so it's small, almost zero, and goes up. This is the Hubble model, also small and goes up, which is kind of related. However, okay, so another interesting thing is the dynamics. So as I said, there will be, okay, so, uh, sorry. So in the IV characteristic, as I said in the introduction, there's something happening below the critical uh, string limit. So something around here happening. And that happens when you introduce the electric field suddenly. So something like this. So this, uh, so this axis is time. So time evolution of the electric field that I, uh, applied to the system. So zero and ramp up to some finite value. So this is an e quench uh, calculation. And the current uh, flows something like this. So this is above the critical field. And the current, okay, so it goes down and fluctuate, and then 
uh, uh, converges to a finite value. This finite value equals the value up here in this branch. Actually, OK, so this is a numerical calculation using the Hubbard model. And this is time against the current. And if you look at this red line, so 0 up and the finite value, OK, so this, I think this is a very typical behavior in correlated uh, iterating state. So it looks something very similar to this process. The interesting thing happens below the critical field. So below the critical field, if I have very weak field, what happens is that my current will oscillate forever like this. This is actually a coherent oscillation of methons in the system. So you're exciting some polarization in the system, and it's just oscillating back and forth. However, there's uh, even below the critical field, but there's some moderate field limit where okay, this is not the current, but it's actually a redshift factor. And this indicates, okay, so it starts from one, and it blows up at some time. This uh, blowing up the, of the redshift factor indicates that the uh, confinement transition takes place. So we have a, a phase amp like this. So this is the electric field, and this is the ramp speed. So the speed that you turn on your electric field. Of course, there's one line up here, which is the Schrodinger limit. And above that, the system is always unstable, and the system flows into this finite current state. Uh, this part, very weak field. Uh, you, we only have uh, coherent oscillation. So this is still in the confining phase. But up here, we have a transition to a deconfined state. And this deconfined state is something that we uh, interpret as a meson mode transition. Or you can, according to this matter, this is the exciton mode transition. So by exciting this vacuum polarization, this will begin to screen the interaction between quarks and anti-quarks. And the confining force will be weaker and weaker. And at some point, the electric field will access that uh, weakened, uh, screened uh, confining force. And that's the line here. Okay. So that was the, my uh, static electric field part. In the last two slides, I will show you our uh, ongoing uh, project of this, uh, uh, this uh, so we call this uh, holographic froquet while same metals. So what we're studying is, so we have this three plus one dimensional drag fermions, but we apply a circular polarized laser in the XY plane. So the electric field is going in the XY plane. Uh, the plot here is what is, what is obtained by the so-called uh, Froke Magnus expansion of this time, uh, time periodic Hamiltonian. So it is known that a time periodic Hamiltonian can be mapped to a static Hamiltonian, a static effective Hamiltonian. And, but there are terms that come from this uh, uh, electric field. And in this case, we have a strange uh, term like this. And including this term, in a three plus one dimensional state, the system turns into uh, a wire semimeter where the drag points, or actually the, it's called a wire point, there are two wire points. So this drag point uh, uh, spread, up, spread into, uh, is divided into two wire points, here and here. Actually, this process is the same, very related, similar to the ones we studied in our old paper about this Froke Chan insulator. Okay, so but this part uh, is okay, but act what we actually want to study is the effect of correlation, so effect of interaction. So we study this process using the ads GFT, uh, method. So actually what we are studying is a three plus one dimensional Froke while semi-metal. But this system is coupled with the gluons and also some uh, Suji partners. So this is what we obtain by 
applying the circularly polarized laser in the XY plane, and in addition, we, op we uh, add this DC, uh, weak DC electric field in the X direction. And you can see this red and green curves. So they correspond to the current parallel to the X uh, direction. So this guy, the red guy, is the parallel to the E field, while this guy, the, so this corresponds to the whole current, is, uh, as you can see, it's oscillating, but its average value is not zero, meaning that we have finite hole effect, finite hole effect in the system, although we don't include any magnetic field. This is the whole conductivity as a function of the applied electric field. So it's zero here, okay, so it goes downward, so it becomes finite, and then it turns over and it kind of uh, go to this. Uh, so it increases and then starts to decrease. And if you go to infinite, a uh, strong electric field actually it goes to zero. So we're now studying these processes. Okay, so this is my summary. Uh, we have using, we are now using this holographic method uh, in to study non equilibrium physics. The first one was the dielectric breakdown process, which is uh, induced by uh, DC electric field. The second one that's an ongoing project is this Froke state where we have uh, periodic driving. I also personally think that it's also very important to develop reliable condensed matter series to compare with these uh, holographic calculations. For example, we have developed the non equilibrium dynamical mean field theory for the Hubble model, and we're uh, comparing the results in the two different systems. And in many cases, there are, there are many similarities, and this similarity uh, helps us to understand the physics deeper. Okay, so thank you very much. That's all. Thank you.